Hi everyone and welcome back to ASFC Chemistry where I'm going to take you through some periodicity and we're going to look at general patterns and trends as we move through the periodic table. We're going to look at three things then as part of this. We're going to look at atomic structure and how that changes atomic radius. We're going to look at the ionization energy trend focusing on some new OCR vocab for when the spec changed in 2015 and we're going to give a brief mention to electronegativity. So the first thing I want to mention is what happens as we go down a group with regards to our change in atomic radius looking at atomic structure. Well, it's quite simple really. As you go down the group, we're going to see that atoms generally get larger. So obviously this isn't to scale, but going down the group that we see that atomic radius increases and this is very simple to explain. We've got more electrons going onto our atoms and the electrons are in shells, and there's only so many electrons you can put in a shell, and so, as the total number of electrons goes up, the number of electron shells increases. So down here, we've got more electron shells, and that's why we've got a larger atomic radius down the group. Moving across the period is a little bit harder to explain, and it actually goes against a prediction that most people have. Let's have a quick look at sodium, for example. So sodium would be kind of in between these two on the diagram I've got here. Remember, it's not to scale, of course. Uh, but then going across period three, what we'll find is that the atomic radius actually decreases. And lots of people think initially when you start the A-level that atomic radius increases as you go across because all the numbers are getting bigger, so the atom must be getting larger. But that's not actually true. What we see is the atomic radius decreases across a period because what we're seeing are more protons going into the nucleus, but something called shielding is remaining constant. Now, shielding is the effect inner shells of electrons have on the attraction of the nucleus to the valence electron. And so if shielding is staying constant because all the electrons are going into the same shell, then what we're gonna see is that that attraction between the outermost shell and the nucleus has an opportunity to increase and pull the electrons in closer. So because shielding remains constant, we're able to see that an increase in the protons of the nucleus increases the attraction of the valence shell to the nucleus, and then they pull closer in. And so across the period, the atomic radius decreases. So that's atomic structure, looking at change in atomic radius out of the way, give it a tick. Um, now we need to look at ionization energy. First off, we need a definition to remind ourselves. Ionization energy is the minimum amount of energy required to remove one mole of electrons from one mole of gaseous atoms or atoms in the gaseous state. Doesn't really matter too much. Now, what we're gonna look at first, we're gonna look at how ionization energy changes moving down the group. Moving down the group, ionization energy decreases. So for example, if we were going to compare beryllium to strontium, we'd find that strontium has got a lower first ionization energy because it's down the group from beryllium. So why is that? The first reason is because the atomic radius increases. So the valence electron is further from the nucleus. The second reason is because shielding increases. And we've already mentioned what shielding is, but just to repeat it, it's the effect inner shells of electrons have on the attraction of the nucleus to the valence electron. And down a group, because there are more inner shells going in, unlike across the period where all the electrons go into the same shell, down a group, we see electrons going onto different shells, so the number of inner shells must be increasing. And that has a knock-on effect. And what it means is the valence electron ends up less attracted to the nucleus. And that means it's gonna require less energy to be removed. So let me just sum that up for you nice and quickly. Down a group, ionization energy decreases because the atomic radius increases, shielding increases, and therefore the valence electron is less attracted to the nucleus and requires less energy to be removed. So what about ionization energy across a period? Well, let's have a look then for sodium and argon again, just like we looked at for atomic radius. Now down a group, ionization energy decreases, whereas ionization energy across a period is going to increase, as we've just labeled up there. So why is that? The reason that that happens is because the atomic radius is going to be decreasing 
the number of protons in the nucleus is increasing, but shielding is remaining the same. And all of that put together means that the nucleus has got a greater attraction to that valence electron. We need to point out that the valence electron is more attracted to the nucleus and therefore it requires more energy to be removed. So when we went down the group, the valence electron was getting less attracted to the nucleus and required less energy to be removed. Whereas across the period, the valence electron is getting more attracted and so is going to require more energy to be removed. We can use the phrase nuclear attraction increasing to help us out with our exam answer for this. The very final thing I want to mention is electronegativity. So electronegativity is the ability or power of an atom to attract the electron pair in a covalent bond. So we're looking at our non-metals mainly over here for this at A level. Now there's an increasing trend up and towards the fluorine here, with fluorine being our most electronegative element that we're going to study. The reason it's the most electronegative, so the best uh, elements are actually attracting the pair of electrons in a covalent bond is because it's got a low level of shielding, a smaller atomic radius, and therefore a stronger attraction to extra electrons. You can also use that description as a general reason for why fluorine is a powerful oxidizing agent. Obviously, that would be in the formula F2. But it's the same descriptors. We're talking about low shielding, a smaller atomic radius, and a stronger attraction to electrons. I hope that gives you a nice summary of all the different general periodic trends with regards to atomic radius, ionization energy, and electronegativity for your chemistry A-level. I'll leave you to the rest of our playlist. Happy revising.